like the trailer? I hope so, because I spent hours on it. Unlike thinking about what I was going to say in this video. So there is a growing concern in the gaming community that once next gen is launched, the Nintendo Switch is just going to sort of fizzle into oblivion. Well, there's a couple things to consider here. Yes, when next gen comes out, it would be an understatement to say that there's going to be a performance gap between the Nintendo Switch and the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. It would be an understatement because there's already a significant there's already a significant performance gap between the Nintendo Switch and the PS4 and the Xbox One. So what's going to happen, oh my goodness, when the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X comes out? Oh my gosh, it's going to blow Nintendo Switch out of the water. Out of the water. But no, I don't quite think that's going to happen. Let's think about this for a minute. When a new generation of consoles launch is a flip a flip <laughs> is a switch flipped and all of a sudden the previous gen that being the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox 1 are just no longer supported no more games no that never happens we're still going to get games for PlayStation 4 and Xbox 1 i would say at least a year and a half after after the launch of the next gen which will probably be in november and as such the nintendo switch will also see support we'll probably get third-party ports from those games that are still coming out on the playstation 4 and the xbox one but hey nintendo nintendo's first party stuff is really all they need no, 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 no. We can't look at it like that either because that's too far going the other way. I think the Wii U proved that first party support alone is not enough to keep a console up and running and get it selling. Now, I, I think maybe the marketing had something to do with it, but I'll be honest, I, I really don't think that was, that was the whole thing. I think that was some of it, but gamers knew what the Wii U was. They also knew that nobody wanted to develop for it because it came out a year before the current gen and it wasn't nearly as powerful as the PS4 and the Xbox One. And as a result, nobody wanted to develop for it anymore. They kind of just wanted to let it go. Now, with the Switch, it's a little bit the other way around. The Switch came out after the PS4 and Xbox One launched and so developers had a chance to see how much it was going to sell before they decided whether or not to to make ports for it and once it sold then they were like okay let's port witcher 3 let's port skyrim i mean skyrim was already in development from the get-go i think because we saw a teaser trailer for it you know bef long before the thing even came out so basically current gen is still going to be supported even after the next gen launches probably again in november i would say for a year and a half maybe more than that and while that's going on the switch will still get third-party games but also consider that the sequel to one of the most popular games of all time zelda breath of the wild is going to be coming out on the switch so i i can't consider that a non-factor i think the fact that that, that game is going to show up on the switch is gonna is gonna make a difference so okay then the question is well what happens after that year and a half well let's think about it a year and a half will be 2022 the switch launched in 2017 um that's about five years i think by then we're already hearing about whatever nintendo is doing next they could be doing a more powerful version of the switch they could be doing a, a just a powerhouse console who knows i mean everyone says that every time nintendo goes after power they lose but every time they've gone after power there's always been a caveat um almost always i should say the nintendo 64 cartridge based and it had a small um 
oh what's the word for it rich rich review tech where are you texture cash I, I don't know maybe maybe that's maybe that's the word for it i don't know it had a small something or other that really uh hindered the n64's performance in some respects gamecube came out and it used you know little mini discs instead of full size discs even though it was more powerful than the ps2 i don't know what happened there uh, to be honest i wasn't playing that many games at the time we could consider the super nes kind of a, a power system of the time probably not the most powerful but it definitely had the the most potential and the best development So when you think about it, Nintendo really hasn't gone after power for nearly 30 years and done it correctly. Maybe if they were to come back and say, okay, here's our powerhouse console, no frills, straight up power. Now you can have Mario and Smash Brothers and whatever on this powerhouse console and it's going to get the best third party support because it's the most powerful console. I, I don't know. I don't know if Nintendo will ever try that again. Uh, they've done pretty well with the Switch, although the Switch has not sold as much as the PS4. So I don't know, but but I do know this. I, I really don't think the Switch is going to fizzle off into oblivion once next-gen launches. We're going to see support for at least another year, year and a half. And again, by then, we will hear about what Nintendo's going to do next to try to keep up with the technology. So that's my take on it. Let me know what you guys think, and uh, we'll see you next time.